This is Guam. Guam, the largest and southernmost of the Mariana Islands chain, has a unique and complex cultural history. Located in the Western Pacific in the geographic region known as Micronesia, Guam is well known for its strategic military and economic position between Asia and the North American continent, but is less known for its remarkable history and resilient people. Inhabited for thousands of years, archaeological evidence indicates that the Marianas Islands were one of the first places to be settled by seafaring peoples, possibly from island Southeast Asia, over 4,000 years ago. The Mariana Islands appear to have been continuously occupied by people who shared the same culture and language that eventually became known as Chamorro. Guam's history is also one of multicolonialism, with the last 400 years of Guam's history marked by administrations of three different colonial powers, Spain, the United States, and Japan. The ceding of Guam to the United States as an unincorporated territory after the Spanish-American War in 1898 introduced Chamorros to democratic principles of government and the modern American lifestyle, while keeping them subjects of a sometimes oppressive U.S. naval administration. Guam also had a unique position in World War II, when Japan invaded the island shortly after the attack on Pearl Harbor in December 1941. For the next three years, Guam was the only U.S. territory occupied by Japanese forces until the Americans returned in 1944 to reclaim the island. The political maneuverings after World War II and the post-war buildup led to even more expansion of U.S. military interests in Guam and the rest of Micronesia, with Guam becoming a hub for economic and commercial development. The easing of military restrictions for entering Guam and the establishment of a local civilian government have made the island an ideal place for people from all over the world to visit, go to school, find jobs, or pursue a variety of economic interests. Today, Guam has a diverse population that enjoys a rich, multicultural, modern, and urban lifestyle, yet continues to carry the indigenous spirit, language, and culture of its people. Guam Legends Tayotaomona Tayotaomona, literally the people of before, refers to ancestral spirits that inhabited the earth along with the living. Ancient Comoros believed the world around them was full of spirits who provided both daily protection and assistance in their tasks, but also created dangers and problems. The connection between Comoros and these spirits has changed over time, primarily due to cultural changes that came about from Spanish colonization and Christianization. Slowly over time, these spirits have changed from the ante of ancestors to the wily ghosts, devils, and demons that play tricks or cause harm today. Tautomona can be defined in different ways, depending on their relationships with the living. Tautomona is therefore a term which could refer in general to all the spirits of Chamorro ancestors, to all of those who have come before. These spirits played a huge role in the daily life of Chamorros, offering assistance and protection with all sorts of daily tasks. These spirits were treated as members of the family and were referred to be name or through terms of endearment. Santa Marian Camelin Santa Marian Camelin, also known as Our Lady of Camerin, is the patron saint of Guam. The 300-year-old Santa Marian Camelin statue is a revered icon, and its unknown origins are explained through legend. The actual statue of Santa Marian Camelin is 28 and 3 quarters inches tall and weighs 48 and a half pounds. It is made of wood, except for the ivory face and folded hands. She is painted with a pink and blue gown and sits high at the Dulce Nombre de Maria Cathedral Basilica in Hagatna, in a niche behind the altar. Guamanians celebrate Feast of the Immaculate Conception each December 8th. Catholics turn out by the thousands in Hagatna to honor her in a procession around the island's capital. She is one of the most important icons in Guam's history, religious or otherwise. Puntan dos Amantes The story tells of two Camoros who loved each other, but their love was unacceptable because he was a high-caste man, Matau, and she a lower-caste woman, Manachang. Mataos were strictly forbidden from allying themselves with those from the lower caste. A certain Matao of the village of Ganyaton fell in love with a young and pretty Manakang girl and fled with her. 
He found no asylum among another native group, however, as he refused to part with her. Pursued by his relatives, the young lovers wandered for some time in the most inaccessible wood and rocky areas. But so precarious and wretched an existence reduced them to despair. Determined to put an end to it, they built a tomb of stones and place in it the infant that was the sad fruit of their love. Then, lost and distracted, they climbed to the very summit of a high, steep-sided peak beside the sea. Binding themselves together by the hair and clasping one another, they cast themselves from that peak into the waves below. The cape was named by the Spanish, Cabo de los Amantes, Lover's Cape, now known as Puntan dos Amantes, Two Lover's Point. But since the story changed to include a Spanish figure, it goes as follows. Once, long ago, during a time when Spain claimed the Mariana Islands, there was a family who lived in Hagatna, the capital city of Guahan. The father was a wealthy Spanish businessman, and the mother, a daughter of a great Magalahi or Chamorro chief. Their oldest daughter was a beautiful young woman, admired by all for her honesty, modesty, and natural charm. One day, against her will, the girl's father arranged for her to take a powerful Spanish captain as her husband. But the girl met and fell in love with a common Camorro man, and they promised each other their love. When the girl's father learned of the couple, he grew angry and demanded that she marry the Spanish captain at once. But she found her lover and escaped. Her father, the captain, and all the Spanish soldiers pursued the lovers up to the high cliff above, Tuman Bay. The lovers found themselves trapped between the edge of the cliff and the approaching soldiers. The lovers tied their long black hair together and kissed for the last time before leaping to their deaths. They were never seen again. Today, the place where they jumped is known as Puntan dos Amantes, or Two Lovers Point. The site has been restored and modernized, and visitors still visit there to learn about the two lovers and enjoy one of the most breathtaking aerial sights of Guam's coastline. Chamorro culture, Gef Pago. Staffed mainly by elder Chamorros who demonstrate traditional Chamorro arts, crafts, and cooking to visitors, Gef Pago Chamorro Cultural Village is modeled after a community from the 40s and when the Chamorro lifeways were more prevalently practiced. Gef Pago is maintained by the historic Inalahan Foundation in an effort to preserve local culture and pass down traditions to younger generations. A visit to Gef Pago, located about halfway down the coastline of the southern Guamanian village Inarajan, will take you back to the time when ropes were handwoven from tree bark and hats and bowls were handmade from natural fibers. Try your own weaving project or make a batch of delectable coconut candy. Enjoy the smiles of the local schoolchildren who also flock to Gef Pago to reconnect with the history of their island's first people. However you choose to enjoy one-of-a-kind Gef Pago, the friendly historic preservationists here are eager to teach you and all who come about the Camorro spirit. Near the entrance stands a dramatic statue of Chief Gadao, a powerful and well-respected leader who, according to legend, challenged a rival chief in a contest of strength. The two men climbed into a single canoe and began rowing furiously in opposite directions, breaking it in half. Valley of the Latte To experience a side of Guam's beauty that extends beyond its pristine beaches and crystal waters, head south to the Valley of the Latte Adventure Park and enjoy an award-winning, top-rated attraction that combines nature, local wildlife, ancient Camorro history, and traditional practices into a unique island experience suitable for guests of all ages. The park offers an array of exciting activities and interesting attractions, including the Adventure River Cruise, Guam's only specialty inland boat tour focusing on Guam's culture and wetland preserves, kayak adventure tour, fishing, stand-up paddleboarding, carabao rides, botanical garden, basket weaving, fire starting, plantation tours, and more. A two-time recipient of the TripAdvisor Certificate of Excellence, Valley of the Lata Adventure Park, has also received awards for Guam's Best Optional Tour and Guam's Most Outstanding Attraction. By combining adventure with education, the Valley of the Latte Adventure Park provides a unique opportunity for guests to not only learn, but to also participate in Chamorro cultural activities, all while surrounded by Guam's natural beauty. More on Valley of the Latte. 
Inarajan Shores. A natural system of swimming holes just off the main road near Inarajan Village's Catholic Church, Inarajan Pools is a popular spot for both visitors and residents. An old diving board serves as a jumping off point for thrill seekers. If you're out for a day of sightseeing in southern Guam, you might plan a stop here between visiting Chief Gadao statue and Gef Pago Chamorro cultural village to the north and Bear Rock and a somber but worthwhile World War II era site to the south. Dry off from your swim and enjoy family time at the picnic shelters. Grill up your new favorite local dish at the on-site barbecue pits. Admire the white crescent of the ocean break visible between the trees bordering the pools. Or just soak in the sun to the sound of laughter and splashing while locals and travelers alike enjoy a favorite hangout. Guam Food The native food of Guam is largely based on what early ancestors could gather, grow and hunt from the land, plus what they could catch and harvest from the ocean. The tree of life, the coconut, offered much in the way of copra, oil, coconut water and coconut milk, as did many other fruit and vegetables. Fish and other seafood and edible seaweed were bountiful, and later colonial and occupational times allowed for more crops, better farming methods and a consistent harvest from Guam's lush volcanic soils. Following the end of World War II, Guam was inundated with foods from the U.S. mainland, notably canned processed foods which islanders embraced for their flavor and ease of preparation. Since then, Guam as the hub of the Pacific has also become a food capital, blending regional tastes, with dozens of cuisines to reflect the melting pot of its people. Today, Guam is a leader in Pacific Rim cuisine and is at the forefront of the culinary revolution that embraced the world in the mid-90s. Its many talented cooks and chefs constantly push the standards of flavors and presentations, and it is easy to find a world-class meal on Guam. The dances that reflect Chamorro culture are performed throughout the world in international competitions and showcases, and visitors come to Guam from far and wide to watch storytelling come to life through dance. The dances of the ancient Chamorro people were not very well recorded, and without the work of dedicated artists and scholars, native Chamorro dance would not exist today. Francisco Frank Rabon, founder of the Tao Tao Tano Dance Group, is credited for the revival of indigenous Chamorro dance. Rabon studied historical documents and recreated ancient Chamorro life through dance. His work provided the basis of Chamorro dance being passed down to future generations of dancers. During the Spanish era, the dances performed by Chamorros were accompanied by distinctly Spanish or Mexican music and songs with Chamorro lyrics. After the Spanish-American War, when Guam became a colony of the United States, the popular dances at the time reflected the island's Americanization. After World War II, cha-cha and jitterbug became popular, and the dances performed during the Spanish period became known as traditional dances. Today, there are gumas, houses, that teach Chamorro dance all over the world, in Guam, the Commonwealth of the Northern Marianas Islands, California, and Japan. In 2009, Guam Visitors Bureau launched the Guam Chamorro Dance Academy in Japan to teach interested Japanese people the art of Chamorro dance. Every year, the island's dance groups come together to celebrate their heritage and unique native dance during the Dinana Minigoff Festival and other competitions held throughout year. To catch a Chamorro dance performance, check out one of the annual village festivals or the Chamorro Village Wednesday Night Market. Many hotels also incorporate Camoro dance into their nightly dinner shows. N. Talofofo. A number of secluded beaches and a scattering of houses, along with a gas station, make up most of Ipan. The area also includes Ipan Beach Park, a popular spot for barbecues. Jeff's Pirate's Cove is located on the northern border of Ipan and has become an institution in the area. It is best known for its relaxed atmosphere bar and grill, along with a small souvenir store and an outdoor area used for arts and craft fairs, concerts, and other gatherings. Guam Jewelry Over the last 10 years, Guam has seen a renewed interest in the handcrafting of traditional Chamorro jewelry. The dedication of several longtime local jewelry artists, as well as apprenticeships for newcomers to the trade, 
ensure that this important aspect of Komoro culture endures. This wearable art form is characterized by the widespread use of local natural materials such as clamshell, bone, spiky spondylus shells from the peach and rose-colored mollusks of the same name, and wood from the eyefeel tree indigenous to Guam. In the pre-contact era, tortoise shell was also commonly used. Guam's jewelry artists, some of whom have decades of experience, often imbue their work with graceful shapes celebrating traditional subsistence practices or Chamorro architecture. Fish hooks and latte stones are just a few of the forms that can be seen decorating the wearers of this eye-catching artwork. If clients are inspired to commission them, some artisans may also craft custom pieces. Also unique to Guam is a style of gold and silver jewelry bearing images of bamboo or rose blossoms. These pieces are commonly regarded as status symbols, much in the way that traditional jewelry once was. The wearing of traditional Komoro jewelry today is a sign of respect for the culture. Historically, it was used in marriages and other religious ceremonies, and as a signifier of rank. Simple Komoro Greetings The Komoro language is experiencing a resurgence, and we Guamanians are proud. At St. Francis School, students order their lunches in Chamorro. Guests at a popular hotel are treated to both solemn and thunderous Camoro chants during nighttime entertainment. And one business leader holds Camoro language classes twice a week for his employees. In fact, he attends them himself and has become fluent in the language. Culture in Guam is alive and genuine. The Chamorro people who were the island's first inhabitants still make up over 37% of Guam's population and their language is celebrated by people from many ethnic groups. Don't be surprised if business owners and restaurant staff greet you with a hearty Hafa Adai, Komoro for hello. Give your best Hafa Adai to anyone you meet on your journey, or take an extra step and try out these simple Chamorro greetings. After all, the casual and friendly atmosphere of Guam is the ideal place to practice a new language. Nature Guam's beautiful landscape and abundant flora and fauna possess a magnetic beauty that must be experienced to be believed. With average daily temperatures of 85 degrees Fahrenheit, visitors can explore Guam's great outdoors in sun-drenched comfort. Experience Guam's natural wonders in exquisite detail on dives, hikes, and submarine tours, and take in sweeping views from overlooks such as Two Lovers Point, Chetty Bay, and Sella Bay a one-of-a-kind paradise. Formed by the union of two now-extinct volcanoes bridged by a limestone plateau, Guam's geography is as unique as the people who call the island home. A coral table reef with deep channels surrounds a majority of the island. Sandy beaches, rocky cliff lines, and mangroves characterize the coastline areas. Guam is home to 32 waterfalls and the highest mountain on Earth, Mount Lam Lam. If that sounds unbelievable, consider that the mountain's base starts in the deepest part of the ocean, the Marianas Trench. Even though Lamlam, or lightning in the Camoro language, juts only about 1,300 feet out of the water, technically speaking it beats out the more famous Himalayan peaks known for their imposing height. Keeping our island beautiful, blessed with warm temperatures and good soil, Guam is a place where people can live in utmost harmony with nature, growing and feasting on crops of papaya, mango, calamansi, breadfruit, avocado, and banana. The people of Guam take seriously our responsibility to care for our island's beautiful environment. A popular annual road race in honor of the endangered cocoa bird, also known as the Guam Rail, raises awareness about the flightless bird's struggle for survival against snakes, pesticides, and other threats. Guam's policymakers, environmental conservationists, and the Guam Visitors Bureau have made concerted efforts to protect our sea heritage in five marine parks. Wildlife refuges and sanctuaries ensure that the development that makes gum luxurious and modern does not overtake our island's magnificent natural setting. A large variety of Guam's indigenous species of plants and animals, including some marine life, can be found at Cushing Zoo, located in the heart of the Tumen Tourist District. In conclusion, Guam's existence as America's most isolated territory is a multifaceted tale steeped in history, strategic significance, and economic opportunities. From its ancient Chamorro roots 
to its colonization by Spain and eventual incorporation into the United States, Guam has evolved into a crucial outpost in the Pacific Ocean. The island's strategic location has played a pivotal role in shaping its destiny, attracting military attention and investment from the United States. Anderson Air Force Base and Naval Base Guam stand as potent symbols of America's commitment to regional security and influence. While Guam has enjoyed certain benefits as a U.S. territory, its residents grapple with a unique political status, lacking full voting representation in the U.S. Congress. This underscores the ongoing dialogue surrounding Guam's future and the desires of its people for greater autonomy, or even statehood. In the face of challenges and complexities, Guam remains a place of resilience, diversity, and cultural richness. Its warm hospitality and flourishing tourism industry exemplify the island's openness to the world. As we contemplate Guam's history and significance, it is essential to recognize the importance of acknowledging and respecting its indigenous roots while charting a course that aligns with the aspirations of its inhabitants. The story of Guam serves as a reminder of the complexities of history and the continuing efforts to strike a balance between tradition and modernity, autonomy, and belonging within the larger American narrative. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the fascinating history and significance of Guam, America's most isolated territory. If you enjoyed this video and want to stay informed about more captivating content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. By subscribing, you'll be the first to receive updates on future videos exploring diverse topics from around the world. Your support and engagement are invaluable to us, and we look forward to bringing you more compelling insights and knowledge. So, hit that subscribe button, click the notification bell, and be a part of our growing community. Until next time, thank you for watching, and remember to stay curious.